This video shows you how to enter room data in RHVAC. In the Using Autoload video, we added one material of each kind to the default room data window. Now let's demonstrate RHVAC's feature that lets you have multiple default materials. Click the D button in the toolbar. Let's add a second default material of each kind. Click the drop down help button for floor 2. Remember that the only material dimensions that we need to enter on the default room data window are the wall height, window width and height, and door width and height. If you have a license for drawing board and would prefer to draw your rooms, then at this point you would open the drawing board window. But since we will be entering our rooms with the data entry method, click the R button in the toolbar to open the room data window. Notice that one default material of each type has been added to the room. That's because we have the option turned on that adds a default material of each type to each room you create. Let's turn that option off and then we'll delete and recreate the first room. Click the Tools menu. Click Options. Uncheck the Copy All Default Data to Rooms Created in Room Data Window Mode checkbox. Click OK to apply our change and close this dialog. Click the Delete Current Room button to delete the current room. Click Yes to confirm deleting the room. Since we deleted the only room in the project, the room data window will now close. Now let's open the room data window again. Now that we've changed the option to insert default materials in each new room we create, the new room we just created has no materials. We want to name this room Living Room, so start typing the first few characters and press Enter once the name we want is filled in. One system is added to each new project you create. If the project has multiple systems, here is where you would enter a number greater than one. The only time that you need to change the zone number input is if you have a VAV system. Then you need to assign zone numbers to each room in the system. For a system with rooms in multiple zones, the program will use the hourly fenestration gain procedure to determine the gain from windows and skylights. These glass gains will be higher than they would have been if all the rooms in the system were in the same zone. The room width and length inputs let you enter the room's conditioned floor area. For non-rectangular rooms, you may enter one and the room area in these two inputs. Let's enter 15 by 12 for this room's dimensions. The room height input has been filled in automatically from the value we entered on the default room data window. The check errors input makes it so RHVAC will check the current room for user errors before you can create a new room or close the room data window. The program will show you any errors in your rooms later when you generate reports or do anything that shows calculated results. So you should set this input to yes only if you find it convenient. We want to insert one of our default floors into floor 1 so click the D button for Floor 1. These are our two default floors that we defined earlier on the default room data window. Select the first one. Notice that as soon as we selected a material for Floor 1, the width and length inputs were automatically set to the room's dimensions. Also notice that the cursor has been automatically moved to the roof ceiling material input for Roof 1. Select the first default roof material. 
As soon as we selected a material for roof 1, the room's dimensions have been inserted into the width and length inputs. Also notice that as soon as we selected a material for roof 1, the cursor was moved into the material input for wall 1. Select the first of our two default wall materials. The wall height of 8 feet has been inserted from the default room, but we still need to enter the length of the wall. The wall's direction does not affect the load of the wall, but it does affect the gain of any windows that you might enter in the wall. Select West for Wall 1's direction. For Wall 2, let's select our second default wall material. Let's enter 10 feet for the length of Wall 2. Select Southwest for Wall 2's direction. For Glass 1, let's select the second of our default windows. The reference input for a glass item lets you select which wall that the window is in. If we had instead selected a skylight for Glass 1, this list would show the current room's roofs instead of walls. Select the southwest facing wall for this window's reference. If there is more than one window of the same material and dimensions in the same wall, you may use the occurrences input for the glass to tell the program how many instances of that window are in the wall. If the window has an overhang, you can enter the overhang offset and projection dimensions directly, or you may select an overhang from the drop down help list. If you click the first item in the drop down help list for the overhang projection and offset inputs, it opens the list in the Notepad program where you may edit the list and add new items. Instructions for how to edit the file are included at the top. For Glass 2, let's copy Glass 1 by clicking the Copy Above Material button. Glass 2 is of the same material as Glass 1, but its dimensions are different. Glass 2 is also in a different wall than Glass 1, so select this room's other wall. For this room's only external door, we need to specify which wall the door is in. Select the southwest facing wall. Manual J recommends that you specify the number of people in the building to be equal to the number of bedrooms plus one but you may place the people in whichever rooms you want, not just the bedrooms. This list of equipment loads comes from Manual J, but you may edit the list and add to it if you like. Click the first item to edit the list in the Notepad program. The file includes instructions on how to edit it. Select Stereo from the list. The Equipment Cooling Loads window does not have OK and Cancel buttons since it automatically saves everything you enter. Click the Close button to return to the Room Data window. The number of registers input is only used if you will be using the built-in duct sizing and are not creating your own ducts using either Graphic Manual D duct size on drawing board or the Tabular Manual D duct size window. If you are using the built-in sizing, you may leave this input at zero so that the program will determine the number of registers needed based on the CFM per register input on the General Project Data window. Normally, you should not enter anything for a room's infiltration and instead should enter all of your infiltration on the System Data window. If you understand the purpose of this input and are going to enter infiltration for a room, you should not enter any infiltration at the system level and you should enter infiltration for each of your rooms. Let's leave this input at zero. 
Similarly, you should usually ignore the ventilation CFM for room input and should instead enter all of your ventilation on the system data window. Let's also leave this input at zero. If you didn't account for lighting items on the equipment cooling loads window, then you may enter a total watts of lighting here. The usual value for the room quantity input is 1. However, if you have a room that is repeated frequently throughout the building, such as an office with just internal loads, rather than entering it over and over again, you should input the room just once, then using this input, declare how many times it occurs in the building. Note that if you wish to temporarily deactivate a room so that you could use it again later, you should enter that its quantity is zero. If you have a room that is heating only or cooling only, then you should set this input accordingly. If all of your rooms in the project are heating only or cooling only, then you should first set this same input on the default room data window so you then won't have to set it for each new room you create. The Radiant Floor Properties window lets you enter the tubing spacing and heat output per area of a radiant floor. The Radiant Floor Report will then show you some calculated quantities of interest, such as the length of tubing needed to meet the load and the length of tubing needed to fill the room. You may edit the list in the Radiant Floor Description drop-down help by clicking the first item in the list. Once again, instructions are provided in the file to show you how to edit it. The Room Notes window lets you enter any text you want for the room. What you write here will be shown on the Detailed Room Loads report. Thanks for watching.